Hello everybody and welcome back or welcome for your first time if this is your first time. Today I'm going to be doing another one of these character design type drawings and I have an idea for a little mouse knight that I've been working on. So let's see if we can kind of flesh him out and figure out what he should look like. So I think for his body we should just start with kind of a a little bean or sack of potatoes sort of shape, like so, as is customary. We'll give him kind of a little bit of a belly, as a, a rats and mice and stuff are a little chubby usually. All right, and then we're gonna. Just draw these little tops of his legs. They're kind of almond-shaped, I suppose. Like so. And actually, my, he's going to be kind of, what is it called? Anthropomorphic or whatever. So we don't want these to be... We want them to be in the position, like, for standing up, right? Not for, um... Not for how a, a rat or a mouse would be anatomically correct. We want it to be more humanoid. All right, and then we'll do these. Their legs are kind of, they're kind of like bird legs, too. They, they have those legs that jog back like that, so... Just basically... I'm shorthanding this, but what I'm imagining is that the um, there's a part of the leg that comes down, then goes back, and then continues down like that. So I'll do something like that, coming down. And then he's going to have his little rat feet, his little mouse feet, whatever they're called. I'm going to shorthand these real quick because I think I'm going to give him some shoes. So I just kind of want to get the idea of where his little toes might be. Actually, I'm going to turn this foot facing outward a little bit more. Or like down like that, I think. Something like that, kind of. Forgive my looseness. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, these are going to be like little boots anyways, so we're just going to give them kind of a little bit of a, I don't know, olive shape, I suppose. Let's, let's see, let's mess around with this a little bit here. Have them kind of jog back up like that, so they look more foot-like, foot, footish. And then they'll kind of come up and have a little bit of a cuff like that. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. So we'll do the a similar thing. This time it's pointing towards us, though. So, oops, want to be careful get that a little bit of a flat spot here it's going to be like the the toe where it meets the ground here something kind of like that and then this will be the midfoot i suppose cuffs on the boots. Kind of like that. That looks pretty good, huh? What do you guys think? Pretty neat. 
All right, and they're almost in proportion. <laughs> I don't mind with these uh, little fantasy characters if they have, you know, larger, large feet and hands and stuff like that. They're they're little cartoon characters, so I think it looks good. And I kind of just let it let the proportions just become what they uh, they want to be sometimes. And you know, obviously, if it's ridiculous looking and too big, we'll change that later. But well, this looks okay. Okay, so he's got kind of a. His rats have like or mice. Is he a rat? A mouse? I don't know. Mouse. He's a rodent of some sort. But anyways, they kind of have like a little bit of a base to their tail. And then maybe I want it. I want his tail kind of dragging behind him, right? Maybe coming around this way. Let's see. Let's draw that the tail sort of in first, and then we'll decide which angle the the base of his tail should be going. We'll do something something kind of like that. How's that look? Pretty good. Let's have this come up and kind of become a hip sort of section here. That way he's not just a complete bag of potatoes. He's our little mouse buddy. <laughs> Maybe I'll have like that cartoony kind of light patch, you know, on his underside, something like that. All right. So anyways, for the upper arms, I've got this, these kind of almond shapes drawn in here. And I think for this one, I'm going to have it coming back this way. I want him, he's going to be like a knight. So I want him kind of holding the shield and I'm just going to really loosely sketch in his hand. And we're going to give him a shield right here. Just kind of centered on his hand. It's going to be one of those small, like, round shields. And the reason I drew the whole hand and all that stuff is just so I could get the positioning so it looked right for the shield. There we go. A little something like that. And his little elbow is going to be coming out here. This little fuzzy elbow. And what kind of shield? We should have like maybe a little bit of a round center for it here. And some bands, maybe. Bracing it. Maybe something kind of like that. Mm. And no, that's that's gonna be a little too too much, I think. I think he should have like maybe Maybe, because he is a mouse after all, maybe you should just have a little plank, a little scrap of wood he found. And he's using that as a shield. So I'm going to make it more of a, a square kind of deal with some wood grain here, I think. Yeah, something a little more like that. That's pretty cool. And let's, I'm going to change the direction of this arm down just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe he'll have a sword. Let's see, which way should he be? I guess his arm could be sticking out this way a little bit. I'm going to 
I'll just draw his kind of his neck in here real quick so I don't get too confused. Extend this arm down just a little bit here to kind of match what I'm doing over here. I realized maybe his arms were a little too short. And let's give him, let's just draw a little round hand. This will be perfect. And he's going to have his kind of thumb coming over. This will be the top edge of his hand. And then his little fingers coming down like so. I'm drawing kind of a down and then over and back sort of angle on those to make them look fingery. We'll just give them three fingers. Maybe something like that. And we'll just give him a short little sword because we're running out of room. That's okay. It'll match his uh, vibe anyways. I'm just going to draw a little triangular blade coming up. And then I'm going to give it these kind of angled edges coming down. And then that sort of a hilt on a sword, just right over. And we can just kind of follow that line straight down and just draw a little pommel. That's this little sword. Something like that. That looks pretty good. You know, I am really not super happy with the shield still, so let's give it an erase here. I was kind of thinking might be cool would be a uh, bottle cap. So let me see if I can make that work. Yeah, we'll draw this little mock hand again. Is that, is that going to be a long enough arm compared to this other one? Let's use, let's see, that's a good length. Yeah, we need to come down further. Still not long enough. And I'm just using the, the base of this eraser here as like a sort of a guide for where the length of his upper arm here. You can use a, a ruler if you have one handy. It's probably a better way to go. <laughs> but there we go. It's a little short forearm. All right. I'm gonna see if I can make. Make it look like he's holding a bottle cap here as a shield. Like maybe he uh, fastened some. Well, let's sketch kind of a, the rim around the edge here. And I'm just going off to this this angle like he's holding it kind of downward. And then we'll sketch in those. Whatever that sh those are called, you know, the little bottle cap doodads. Something like that. And we want them going all towards the front for the most part. They, I mean, they angle slightly because it's a bottle cap, but you want those lines heading towards almost in the same direction. Like if, if there was like a vanishing point way far out, that's where they would uh, sort of intersect. All right, let's, I'm gonna use something a little more precise than this needed eraser here. Hopefully this paper isn't all scuffed up and if it gets too scuffed, it'll start to make the, um, the ink bleed a little bit. I'm just going to slim down his arms a little bit. They look a little... I was trying to make him look furry or whatever, but it just looks a little ridiculous, I think. We'll just slim him down. There we go. Like 
like that. And then maybe we'll give him like a tabard, I think is what it's called. I'm seeing it. It'll just come down right about here. It's kind of like that. Let's make sure it's, I got a nice level line here. And then he's gonna need a belt if he's gonna have a tabard. All right, <laughs> this is turning into a complex drawing here, isn't it? That's okay. It's part of the fun of doing this character design stuff, right? Have it kind of scrunched in a little bit here. I'm just going to give him a little bit of a belt. Just kind of, it'll be disappearing behind the, the bottle cap there. And then I'm going to draw the wrinkles like this, this cloth is kind of bunched up on top of here. See what I mean? Give it like a little bit of a... And we might as well just come out here all the way. Kind of a bunched up look at the top there. And you can just do that by going about a 45 degree angle. And then for this bottom edge, we'll do a little bit of a ruffle too. That'll make it look really cool. So we'll pick a couple uh, lines here. I think that's a little too far over. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I don't really know how to explain it exactly. Uh, just going to have the, the cloth sort of wrinkled up over here. And I did that wrong. You want it to kind of it's almost like a puzzle piece look when you're... This, this is a very simplified way of doing it that I'm showing you here, but you can get really complicated. But you want the, it to curve that way and then this way, back and forth, basically. This will just make it look like it's kind of bunched up. Like so. Just extend this down a little bit. And I think if I was going to, this is kind of one of those ones where it's getting a little overcomplicated. I would probably simplify this down to be a little bit more cartoony for, for a comic or whatever. But we're having a good time here today, so why not? Okay, so we want these sort of like segments, you know, there's tails are kind of segment and we want them to change direction here because it's coming out of his butt air or above his butt, but not out of his actual butt, but, and then it's curving around this way. So we'll just draw them like that. I don't know how they, I'm just doing this all from imagination right now. I can't remember. Can't remember. <laughs> Can't remember. Can't remember what how a rat tail actually looks. I think this is kind of ish. I could mess with that in a future version. Why not? Okay, we'll leave his arms bare. I want to have something across the top of the cap, like it's got like something printed on it, but I can't think of any soda brands or anything like that off the top of my head so maybe I'll just do I 
And maybe it'll just have a stripe, you know? I was gonna write like pop or cola or something in there, but we'll just leave it as a stripe. All right, so, so his neck's gonna come up this way. I don't want him to have a very tall neck. He's gonna have a helmet on. Um, so his head is just gonna be basically a big circle, just barely poking out here. Something like that. And I'm just very slightly angling it forward. And we're going to just draw a very slight downward angled sort of ring. And then sketch another one this way. And then he's going to have sort of a knight's helmet sticking out this way. Um, you know what? I want to change the perspective on that, or the angle, I guess, is more what I mean. I want him to be looking upwards a little bit more. I think it'll make more, it'll look a little better. Yeah, we'll do something like this. So, scratch what I just said. We'll change it. But that's part of, like, figuring out how to do all this, right? Figuring out character design is just messing with it, sketching around. I'm probably way overworking the sketch, but that's okay. I think it's fine. I'm going to have, give it kind of this, this sort of a uh, visor, but with the pointy part on the bottom sort of look, I guess. We can have like a flared piece come out here. And then just round on the top here. Roundish. We'll give him a little spike. I'm kind of go basing it off of uh, maybe one of those knights from Labyrinth, the little goblin knights. And we'll give it kind of a skirt edge around the bottom like this. But the difference is here on our guy, he's going to have little cutouts for his mouse ears to stick out. So you will see it's going to be kind of this is like the slot where he looks out of here. And maybe it'll just curve down like that, actually. That looks pretty good. I'll just add a little bit of his fur kind of sticking out here. A little bit of fuzz. All right, and then he's going to have little slots cut out for his ears. And we're just going to do some little mouse ears like this. Just kind of popping out. Right. And then his little visor should have some little holes in it, like so. Probably something like that. That looks pretty good to me. And then I think right here where it all kind of attaches, I think that was kind of looking confusing to me. I think I'm just going to draw kind of a disc right here. That'll be a good pivot point for all the bits on his helmet. I'm back this way. And then this mouse here should be actually sticking out of a slot. So we could just give it a little bit of a slot here. Kind of a double line. It'll be sticking right out of there. But then the helmet should come back behind it, like so. 
Just come to a point at the back, maybe. If I can draw. If I can figure out how to draw. <laughs> that would be nice. There we go. All right, and then I think the last final, the finishing touch, maybe we'll give him something on his tabard here. Oh, I don't know what, maybe just some wrinkles, maybe, yeah. Maybe that's why it looked so plain. I was thinking it looked really plain. All right. Okay, so let's give this whole thing a light erase here and we'll start inking. And should be pretty cool. Hopefully we didn't get a little we didn't get too complicated here. That's some dark pencil marks. <laughs> So I think I'm just going to start over here on the, the blade and I'm just going to give it some chips as I'm going along. Why not? Make them asymmetrical from each other. And this is the uh, fine nibbed fountain pen, by the way. I don't know if I said that. And then we'll line in that hilt like so. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a double line right across that bottom edge like that, just to make it look a little thick, thicker. And then as far as the center line goes, I'm just going to kind of peck it in there very lightly like that. And that should be good. All right. And then as far as mouse hands go, he's going to have like a little bit of a claw on his thumb, just like that. And We'll come back here like this and then we'll just line in his fingers and I'm not going to give him claws on these fingers. I'm going to imagine they're kind of tucked underneath his little, his little rat claws, mouse claws. I don't know. What is he a rat? He's a rat. Let's, I'm trying to say he's a mouse. I don't know. For some reason, I'm pretty sure he's a rat. He's a little rat knight. All right. Then we'll just come up like that. And then for his little furry upper arms, I'm going to do these kind of little fur, fur lines like this. You see? Just kind of... I don't know how to describe them. Overlapping, maybe. But you can see. You can see what they look like. And then as this little tabard comes down, we'll do something like this. And line in those little wrinkles. Like so. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right. Okay, and then for for his uh, his belt here, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of freehand this in here. I'm going to do some kind of lines going around to make it look like it's made out of like a little piece of rope or something. Just like so. Pretty simple, just diagonal lines across. It's not... Not too complicated. That's why I just freehanded it in there. And then for his little bottle cap, I'm not going to worry about making it super round or anything because I'm going to imagine it's kind of beat up. So it can have like little nicks in the edge there or whatever. And then with these little scallops or whatever the hell they are, <laughs> um, you could do like a little flat spot in between them and make it look a little more realistic. Uh, all 
right, and then I'm just grabbing these sort of wrinkle lines from his, his tabard here, pulling them down. We'll give it a little bit of a bit of piping, I guess, or a, a hem, might, might be called. Yeah, probably a hem there, right on the edge. And then I'm just drawing in some little more wrinkle, some more little wrinkly lines here. There we go. Same thing for his furry little upper arm here as the other side. This side, I'm not going to draw the forearm. I'm not going to worry about it. It's just going to be all behind there. And then... I don't know what I was doing there, but we'll mess with that in a minute. <laughs> all right, so here where his tabard's coming out, we want to grab these little edges these wrinkles and folds and just kind of whip out the edges of those lines like that. And you know, he's, this is something he scrounged up, so it doesn't have to be perfectly nice or anything. I mean, unless you want it to, you want, maybe yours is a mouse knight in shining armor. I like my, all my stuff to be a little creepy, creepy vibes a little bit. I try anyways. So I didn't want to give him like a little cartoony face or anything. Okay, and then same thing with the fur around his little tail area. I'm just going to peck in some kind of outlines like that. And then right here, I almost forgot that little spot. That's just like the top of his thigh sticking out from behind the, the tabard or whatever. All right. And we'll draw in his little boots. Do something like this. Same thing over here. Just overlapping lines. Make sure that you always overlap your lines so that they're going in the direction of the foreshortening. If that makes sense, like if these were to overlap the other way, they would be, they would make it look like it was going the wrong way. So you always want them to kind of overlap in the correct direction. All right. And then for his tail, I'm just going to outline it. I'm just going to try and give it a little bit of a wobble where the sections are like this, something like that. Because we're going to come through here in a second after I draw in the helmet and the ears. And we're going to add a bunch of little texture lines and all sorts of stuff like that. So, All right, then we're going to want to grab that edge right there. And one nice thing about this uh, Stillman and Burn paper that I'm drawing on right here is it seems to be a little more resilient to being erased than the moleskin stuff. So if you're having issues with your ink feathering after you erase, um, try erasing lighter or switching your paper up. It seems like that helps as well. All right, something like this. And this is just gonna be filled in dark. We're not gonna be able to see his little rat eyes or whatever. 
red eyes. And I just kind of gave that a double line on the front there to give it kind of a, a little bit of dimension. We'll make him look a little scraggly. You know, we can add scraggly bits of hair sticking out. I'm getting sidetracked though. Let's not start on that just yet. All right, and then for this part, what I'm gonna do, it was hard to tell in the sketch, but I'm just gonna do a little bit of a double line and that's gonna be like the armor's like made for, to accommodate his ear here. And I'm gonna give him a big notch in his ear right there. It's just gonna make him look like he's been in some battles and stuff. We're just gonna give him little ear hairs coming up like so. And then I'll draw, make sure I'm not smudging th everything everywhere. There we go. <laughs> I'll draw that. I'm actually going to come down a little bit shorter with this ear because it's going to be kind of foreshortened a little bit. I feel like it was sticking out a little too far. And yeah, that looks a little better. I'm also going to adjust the position of this spike a little further back like that. And then we'll come back here and adjust this hel helmet a little bit too. Bam. Just like that. All right. So that's pretty much everything with the fine nib. Let's switch over and start working with our extra fine. And this part should go pretty quick here. We're just gonna come through and do lots of little contour lines and sh some shading here. I'm just gonna grab right above that line right there. Oh, <laughs> I lied. I was trying at least right above that line. And that's just gonna make it look like that maybe there's a little bit of a sole there. I'm just going to come through and hatch. Just following the contour like so. And then up here. Our light source is coming down from the, the top left there. So maybe just a tiny bit on these corners. Like so. And we'll just leave it at that. And then same sort of thing over here, just like this, following that contour. We'll do something like that. And then I'm just going to shade in his little legs. As they're all hiding out here in the dark. And then do some hatching for his little fur down here, which is also going to be in the dark. And I might come through. We'll see how it looks at the end if it needs any adjusting. But I might come through and do a little bit of cross hatching on this stuff at the end. But like I said, we'll see. If it doesn't need it, it doesn't need it. So. I always try and do single pass hatching first and then if it if there's not enough contrast on stuff then I'll switch to cross hatching. Well not always, but a lot of, a lot of times I'll do that anyways. Then yeah, just a little bit of hatching there. And I'm just trying to follow the the contour of his shapes here. I'm not too worried about if, you know, some of this stuff kind of gets bleeds together, muddies up or anything like that. It's no big deal. All right. And then, yeah, for his tabard here, I'm going to just do a little bit of hatching like so. And then in this, these kind of folding areas that fold back, we want to go real dark down there. But I see how I left an edge light right there. We're just doing that. And then this right here is going to be kind of going behind 
his little shield there. So we're going to give it a little extra. Just a little bit right there. And then change the direction. And I kind of show this, what I'm doing here in one of my hatching tutorials. I'll link them in the description if you're interested. But I'm just following the contour in different directions here to give it a lot of shape. Bam. And over here, got a little wily. Not sure what I was thinking. But hey, we can work with it. Looks nice still. Sometimes you gotta embrace the jank, the wabi sabi. There we go. Looking pretty good. And then I'm just gonna grab just a couple tiny little lines on the edge here, just to give this sort of his rope belt a little bit of texture, like that. And then we'll come up and just hatch perpendicular to the contour line right here to just create some little shadows. You can even add little stipples off the end, little dots if you want. Just a tiny bit. Like that. And then same thing up here. And then across here, we're going to do a similar thing to down as we did down there. We're going to start to work in a little bit more hatching. Kind of coming up like this. We want to make sure we get it real dark right underneath because this part under his helmet isn't like a, it's not like a band going around his neck or anything. It's like a flange almost. So we want to try and get that a nice shadow underneath that so it doesn't look like it's, so it looks like it's kind of going the right direction if that makes sense. Now I'm just leaving highlights like on the edges there to kind of give it a wrinkly look. We can even come up and maybe extend this wrinkle up towards this one. Yeah, see, and it just makes it look like wrinkly fabric. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, we should probably extend all of these upwards because it's kind of... It's getting a little too dark up there for this to make sense anymore. That's just, you know, when you're shading from imagination, sometimes you got to kind of work it back and forth like that. We can even go pretty dark down here like that. Hey, that looks pretty cool, right? Let's finish this edge up here. And... go ahead and hatch all the way up on this because his head is going to be casting a shadow and his helmet and all that. All right, so let's start working on this bottle cap here. This is going to be slightly tricky, but not actually all that hard. Just like a little bit of, you just want to make sure these lines come up and stop at the edge where they bend over and become the surface of the, the cap, right? Right. And then 
change kind of what side they're on as you go over this way, just to, for it to make logical sense. And that got a little muddy right there, but that's okay. We can add a little bit of a hatching in between them and the low spots here, like so. And we can come along and give it just a little bit of hatching along this bottom edge here to kind of round it out. Something like that. And then it's not the roundest bottle cap I've ever drawn. <laughs> and then this is kind of tangenty right here. Like it's, it's a little too much lined up with that. Uh, that his belt there. So I'm just going to change the direction of the, the band that I was decided was going to be printed on here. We'll just have it come in kind of diagonally like that. Yeah. And then for this, this is going to be, I'm going to say that this is like a darker color or something. So I'm just going to cross hatch right across it. Just, or not cross hatch. I'm going to hatch just straight lines all the way across, all the way down to like that. And then just a little bit of light hatching down here. Just leave that edge kind of poking up. And even less up here on the top. And well, maybe I'll come through and make some little, I think these lines maybe came up a little too far. That's okay. So think that this we're just gonna tune it up a little bit I think it's looking pretty good here it needs a little more contrast but we're gonna come through here after all this and we're gonna do an outline on everything a big bold beautiful outline and I'm just Hatching in his little fur textures here, like so. Oh yeah, and we were going to make him kind of scraggly, weren't we? He's like battle, battle hardened, maybe, or something. All right. It's a good way to make him go from being like super cartoony to kind of a little more gritty looking. It's kind of cool how you can do that. And I think, yeah, we're probably going to need a little cross hatching on this guy. Something like that. fuzzy dude <laughs> the fuzziest of dudes all right we'll do something like that and then just some little contour lines and hatching along his knuckles and I'm just trying to be careful to not smudge it too much because I just did a bunch of line work over there. So, how I'll do the fingers is just leave this top edge blank and just do a shadow along there. That'll give them, make them look nice and 3D. And then just a little bit of hatching coming out here from behind them. Can even kind of connect those palm lines in there. It's not perfect, but that's okay. And then down here, we'll give him just a tiny bit of shading along that pommel. Maybe a little bit darker up here. This is pretty much closed up, but we can hatch along those edges. All right, and then we'll do 
some longer lines where the the nicks are. We'll just grab those edges there. And then everything else will just be these little short hatching lines like so. Blade here. And then on this side it'll come up from the center like this. And voila, there's a sword. All right, let's come through here. Ooh, kind of shade in this sort of flange thing on the bottom here. And I'm just going to add some little dots along the edge here, like this. There we go. And then we will draw in his little breather holes. I'm just doing tiny circles. You could even just do dots if you want. I wouldn't bother with the circles if you don't want to. Let's see here. Something like that. Yeah, we're definitely going to need a little cross hatching on this guy. All right, and I'm actually going to flip this upside down because this contour is going to be a lot easier for my hand. And I'm just going to hatch right over those breather holes too. Like, don't, not even worried about it. Just like that. I'm just kind of following that curve. All right, and then on the top, I'm going to have it kind of start about there and then get longer and longer as it comes back. Inside here, it's just going to be solid black. We can hatch it just so it has a little bit of texture, but just make sure you get those hatches super close together. And even just kind of double layer them up. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is just come through here and do the little ear hairs inside his ears. And also give it a little bit of a, a give it a little bit of shape with some hatching here. Same thing over on this side. And we'll shade in his spike here. Like that. And then. Let's do some, just a couple little lines here, and then pick up kind of over this way. There we go. For his little visor, like so. There's something about this just looks a little funky. Let me see here. Let's. This is probably going to be shaded a little bit more here because it's under his visor. Maybe we'll do something like that. And then maybe a little bit of shading back that way. Like so. Do that there. And then I'm gonna do the hatching on his helmet kind of coming up this way like that. And we'll leave a nice big highlight on his forehead like that. And then have the 
this coming back here. Into something like that. Voila. Let's do a little bit of the hair kind of coming out. And yeah, I think we're going to go and go around and darken up all of his hair hatching and add kind of scraggly texture to it. Make him look kind of gritty or something. There we go. Just kind of cross hatching in a similar but slightly different direction to kind of make it look like the hair rather than hatching, I suppose, rather than arbitrary hatching, give it kind of a grain, something like that looks pretty good. I feel like this is way too bright over here too. Let's get a little bit more darkness on his little tabard. There we go. Pretty happy with that. I'm just coming through and doing little details as I see them here now. And I'm just going to go across the hatching down there because I don't want that to get too crazy. And just add a little bit of the the scraggly bits. All right, and the same thing down here, just kind of cross like that. Some nice dark shadows. Add a little bit of scraggle. <laughs> and we'll cross hatch that too. There we go. See, and what that's doing is that's making it stand out from his tabard a lot more. It was kind of getting a little monotone. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's why I like to come through after sometimes and do a little bit of cross hatching. And then a little bit more down here through his leg. And then I got a little wild with this stuff over here, so it's just, I'm just gonna do whatever I think on this. There we go. It's the cool part about making him look scraggly is you can you get a little bit more freedom with stuff like that. Okay, then for his tail here, what we're going to do, it is turning over here, so we want to Make sure that we change direction with our hatching, and it's going to be right about there. Yep. Something like that. And I'm just, once again, just hatching perpendicular to those contour lines I drew earlier. That's just going to give him that sort of rat tail sort of texture. All right. I'm kind of just adding, I don't know, adding a bunch on there. Let's make sure we got our shadow. There we go. that. All right. And then their tails, I think, are a little hairy, just like little bits of hair. So we can just add some little random 
hairs here and there's. And then I'm just adding some little hairs here and there to maybe some little dots to create like nicks and scuffs and all sorts of stuff. And then I'm going to do a little cross hatching on the top of his tabard here, I think. Just to really drive that shadow a little bit more. Just like so, we'll have it get nice and dark right down here under his bottle cap shield. And then maybe even just a little bit of a shadow on the top of his rope belt there. I'm just going to add in some little knuckle wrinkles there. It was looking a little blank, a little bare. And the seam on the top of his boots. All right, so let's grab this eraser real quick because these pencil lines are a little pronounced here. And I just want to be careful not to smudge the ink here. But I want to get rid of some of this pencil. I'm just going to really carefully go around this edge. <sighs> like so. And then we are going to give him a nice bold outline. I'll show you how we do that. Just with this a little bit thicker fountain pen. And I'm just going to follow this peripheral line and ignore the little hairs and stuff like that. You can add like a little bit of uh, jaggedness to the, uh, the the peripheral line if you want it to look a little more rustic or whatever. You can kind of adjust. See, like I'm giving him a little bit on his helmet here, especially. I feel like the lines were a little too... Too um, nice for... What? I was trying to make him look a little grungy. You know, you can give him little chunks, stuff like that. Doing the tabard around the fur isn't too important because we did that cross hatching, but it comes out a little bit in certain places. And I think it just adds that little subtle pop. So we might as well. Oh, and you know what I just noticed? You guys are probably yelling at that your screens. I didn't finish up his arm over there. So let's do that real quick, sorry. Crosshatch the fur over here. <laughs> and we'll 
just add that. There we go. I'm even going to add a little extra right through here on that one. There we go. Much better. Okay, so where were we? We were down here, I think, when I noticed my boo-boo. All right, and then, yeah, around this bottle cap is going to be an important part because it lost a lot of definition just because I think there's a lot of little details going on. This is really going to make it pop out nice and good. Okay, and then we're not going to line any of the furry parts. But we are going to line the boots and the legs. In. And like I was saying in the previous video, the the bird minion thing that I tend to overdo these character designs for a cartoon drawing at first. That's kind of what I did here. And this would actually, I'd probably do a couple more versions of it to simplify it, make it easy to draw before I used it for my, uh, my little comic book scene thing that I'm planning on doing, so. We're just gonna add these little edges around this line. But yeah, so I would probably go through and make his arms and legs more, you know, more like stick arms, stick legs, stuff like that, and simplifies a bunch of stuff on him. He ended up looking similar, but definitely different. And, you know, I think I'm not super happy with his tail here. I'm going to darken in the end of it a little bit here, first of all. And then I think I'm going to draw in those segments with this thicker line. Yeah, I'm glad I did. So that's going to look a lot better. All right, and make sure we didn't forget anything. We still need to line in his sword and his hand over here. So let's give that a quick one, quick uh, bold outline. Go around the hand first. And then we'll line in his little sword here. our little rat night. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a little bit longer than what I've been doing, doing lately, so let me know if you like it or if it sucks. <laughs> and um, go ahead and do all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. And let me take a second here to thank my patrons on Patreon. If you're interested, there's a link in the description and at the end of the video here, but 
The Patreon helps support the channel, and I appreciate all of you greatly. If you're interested in getting your name in the Patreon notebook here, go ahead and check it out. And I will see you all in the next video. All right. Bye.